when your tile is all finished, you've got some cleaning up to do on your tile. So the first thing about cleaning up your tile is it needs to happen when your tile is leather hard. So when you touch your clay, it shouldn't really bend under the light touching. Um, if I do this with my shelf here, it's not bending at all. That's how I know it's leather hard and it feels very, very cold. So the first thing that you're gonna do is you're going to be getting all the gunk out and I call them dingleberries. Uh, that's what my first ceramics teacher called them. And it's just all these little pieces of clay that don't belong on your tile. And what'll happen if you don't get them off or you don't smooth them out is that they'll get stuck in your tile and they'll become really sharp once you're working on it. So I'm just going to take any of my tools, needle tool, if you've got that paper clip, that works well. Your loop tool works as well, big or little. And you're just going through and you're getting out all the ningle berries and you can also smooth them. So if you're feeling like um, it's in a spot where you can't get them all the way out, you can just smooth them right off. So you're gonna do that to your whole tile. The next part is going to be called breaking the corners. You're not physically breaking your tile. Um, what you are doing is you're looking for the sharp edges and you're running your finger over them. Any sort of sharp edge in your clay tile needs to have its corner broken. And that doesn't mean you're making it round or anything like that. You're literally just running your finger across and making sure that it's nice and smooth. If you don't do this, what you're gonna end up having, and under here you can kind of see I've got a whole lot of them. Um, what will happen if you don't do that is all of these will become really, really sharp. And then when you go to pick it up, it'll be really sharp and you'll have to do a lot of sanding before you glaze. Um, so breaking the corners is nice and easy. And it'll save you some time on the other end. And it also makes your tile look nicer better texture. Uh, you're going you're gonna to want to break the corners all the way around too, so check this edge here. The next part is going to be to put in those functional holes. So if you're planning on hanging your tile on the wall, you need some spots to hang it. So the first thing that you're going to look at is where you want to put them. Um, if it's a bigger tile, mine is a little bit bigger, it's probably going to need either one big hole or two small holes. Um, I'm going to go with one bigger one, and I'm going to check, measure, make sure it's in the middle. And then you can really stick anything with a, like the end, the size that you want into your clay. And you're just going to stick it all the way through till it gets to your plate or board, and you can always make it a little bit bigger. Okay. If your tile is pretty thick, you might be able to put um, a hole in the back without poking all the way through so that a nail can stick there. But I find that these make it much easier to hang and they're very sturdy. All right, the next thing you're gonna do is you're just gonna check over your details, make sure your dingleberries are gone. If you've got any details you wanna put back in, um, I recommend using either the end of a pencil or you can also use, uh, we have these modeling tools in class. They have slight points to them, but what they do is they smooth out every crevice that they go into. So if I want to keep an area really smooth, but I want to kind of redefine it, this tool is great for that. You can also use your, you can also use the end of a uh, kebab. So those kebab sticks work really well for this. So I'm checking it around, looking for any details I wanna add back in. Make sure it's good to go. Then you need to remove it from your board. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna just kind of check with both hands. All right, so it's not coming off really easily. You can take a knife or you can take, in this case I'm taking my needle tool and I'm going all the way around here. And I'm kind of, sometimes clay just gets 
um, wedged in between. So I'm just kind of breaking that corner and then I'm gonna test it again. Now, sometimes if you wrap your board, that works really well. And I'm not pulling up very much here. I'm just kind of trying to break the seal all the way around. So I'm not just gonna pry it up. Once your clay is off of the board, what you're going to do is you're gonna really gently flip your clay over. It's important that your clay is for sure leather hard because you're going to need to be very careful with it at this point. So I'm gonna just really gently flip it over. I cleaned off the back with my rib and then you're going to write your name Get all the gunk out of it. First and last. Get the gunk out. And then your class period. So you can put um, one on there. Check your hole, make sure it's nice and clear. And then you're going to let it dry. So you should keep it on your board. Clean off your board, make sure it's nice and smooth. I like to slide my table or my tile off instead of um, picking it up and peeling it. And then I'm gonna slide it back on here. And I am still going to cover it uh, because you want clay to dry slowly. So I'm going to put it in my bag and then we do still want it to dry so what you can do is you can leave it in your bag and then leave your bag open a little bit and keep checking on it if stuff is drying more quickly than others like these mushrooms here you can see I'm going to spray them with a water spray bottle or I can take my wet sponge and kind of get them back to the state you want your whole clay tile to dry all together you don't want one part to get leather hard without the others 